whether it's you receiving an inheritance from a loved one who's left you something or winning the lotto, receiving a bonus at work, claiming from the road accident fund or actually just getting your retirement payout at some stage you or someone you know will receive a lump sum amount that they were not expecting or that they're not used to and a lot of people end up blowing this money or spending it recklessly and then having a lot of regrets what i want to remind you guys is that if there's a continuous cash outflow and not a cash inflow Regardless of how well you plan your money, it will run out. The key thing is for you to continue to generate income so that as you're spending and enjoying your money, you're also making some of it so that you don't run dry. Welcome to today's video. My name is Nogutle Kumalo and today's video is going to be things that you can consider as you're planning for your lump sum amount. Please remember that this video is not financial advice and I am not saying this just because I want to add words but it is because I cannot help you specifically with your life and your decisions because I don't know enough about you. I am just going to give you some tools that you can use for educational purposes as you plan for this newfound fortune. However, I would always recommend that you do speak to a financial advisor who's actually going to help you work through the entire thing at your own level. But don't don't worry, I'll show you exactly what I mean as we go ahead with this video. Thank you so much to the NetBank team who have actually sponsored a segment in this video. I'll talk to you a bit more about them and how their My Goals Bank account could be something you're looking into. My name is Nogutle Kumalo and I'm a personal finance creator. Some of the videos I've made include how to buy shares, top 10 affordable cars, how to file your taxes, side hustles, interviews, you name it, I've done it. Note, these videos do not constitute financial advice. My aim is to plant the idea, it's up to you to water it. And if you enjoy my content, please tip me with a like, comment and subscription. If you'd like to watch this video in Isi Zulu, please do make sure you do. I have made a video as such, so make sure you are keeping your eyes glued to my channel. I will also leave a link in the description box once it has dropped. Before we get into the serious stuff, let's do a bit of a roll call. So if you know someone who has received a lump sum, blew it and then regretted it, drop us a broken heart emoji in the comments just so that we can see the stats. And if you know someone who has received a lump sum, spent it well, and continues to live well, please drop us a green comment, just that you can motivate us to show us that it is indeed possible. All right, cool. I'm assuming you guys have dropped your comments. If you haven't, pause this video. Let me know in the comments, just so that I can also see what is currently happening in our community. And then I wanna head over into this checklist with this checklist, I've got eight items that you guys need to do. So number one on the checklist, breathe. If you want to pray or meditate, do that. If you want to take a nap, do whatever you need to do to ground yourself. You've probably received this news and it might come to you as a shock. You might not be used to receiving such large amounts at one go. Therefore, it's important for you to actually try and remain sane. Step two, mentally prepare yourself. So now that you're going to receive this money, there may be certain things you need to do before it gets handed over to you. So make sure you are prepared for it. So for example, if there are any documents that they've handed over to you, grab these documents, read through them carefully and make sure you understand what they entail. This also includes understanding how much you can expect and when, as well as understanding if you receive all of your money up front as one lump sum or if it's broken down into different batches. I say this because I know sometimes with inheritance money, there might be an amount that comes out immediately after someone passes and then another one that comes out a few weeks later or some months later. So make sure you understand how this proportion works as well as the timing, just so that you're not blowing everything you receive in the first tranche because you assume you're getting something else when in fact they've actually given you the whole thing at once. Ask yourself if there's any tax on this amount and whether this tax has already been calculated or if this is something you still need to declare. Sometimes when you win something or you receive something, they'll quote the gross amount and then you might start planning on the gross amount. However, as soon as you receive it, you realize that there's actually a big chunk that has gone towards tax and you might have not thought of that. So as you're reading this document, try and find what they are saying about tax and if they haven't mentioned it, 
ask them. And then lastly, in the preparation, ask yourself what documents are required for you to access this money and whether you have them. Number three, speak to a financial advisor. This person must be registered with the FSCA just to make sure that you are speaking to someone who is actually qualified to give you this type of advice and also so that you have peace of mind knowing that if they do something that is illegal or wrong, they will be held accountable and you will be able to report them if necessary. When it comes to financial advisors, sometimes companies that are going to give you this money will actually require you to speak to a financial advisor. They will arrange a consultation, but it is usually optional or people don't take it seriously. When you're with the financial advisor, you need to see it as counseling, okay? You might not see their impact right now in the near future. However, long term, their assistance will help you make sure you have a plan for your money. If you are trying to find a financial advisor but you're not sure where to look, I will leave some resources in my description box of how you can try find a financial advisor. However, if you think that I should actually consider getting my license, drop me a comment and say get it no here so that I can actually see if there really is a demand and if you guys would actually come to me if I become an independent financial advisor. I don't want to waste my time studying this thing if you guys are not going to come. So let me know in the comments. But because I don't have this license yet and I'm also talking to a lot of people and not just you specifically, this is not financial advice. All right, let's move on to number four on our checklist, which is a safe collection day. So when you receive your money, you're probably not going to be collecting physical cash. Uh, it's probably just going to be sent to your bank account. Ask yourself, what bank account is this money going into? How many people have access to this account? Where do I keep my card? Is anyone else linked to this card? If you are going to be physically going to certain offices, make sure you have a secure mode of transport. So if you're used to taking a taxi to wherever you're going, that is fine. However, if you're going to a place you're not used to or you're scared you might get lost, potentially use Uber or try and get someone to drop you off. If you do have a car and you feel safe and calm enough to drive, you can also drive yourself. However, make sure that you are keeping safe. The last thing you want is for people who know you're going to collect your money to actually stop you on your way home. Speaking of bank accounts, I do want to highlight a product that NetBank has called the My Goals. There is the My Goals, My Goals Plus and My Goals Premium. And these are different accounts which range from five Rand per month all the way to 240 Rand per month depending on what you're looking for. If you don't need all the bells and whistles of the premium, you can stick to the five rand per month one and I'm sure it'll be fine. But anyways, the reason I'm bringing up the NetBank My Goals account is because they have the special feature called the My Pockets, which I love because it allows you to separate your savings according to the different categories. So since we're speaking about lump sums, you'll see that there'll be certain things that you want to plan for and it'll be great if you can separate the money. For example, if you want to finish off your studies, you can open a pocket just for your studies. If you want to travel, you can have a My Pocket for your travel. If perhaps this is inheritance money and you'd actually like to do a tombstone unveiling one day, you can also have a My Pocket just saving up for that tombstone unveiling. This is great because you're able to separate this lump sum amount into different pockets, which will help you plan better. Because when you see a large amount in your bank account, you just keep swiping because you think there's a lot of it and it never ends. However, when you see it clearly spread out in its different pockets, you can see that, okay, I do have money saved for this. I also have money saved for this. And this amount, hmm, maybe I can spend it on something I like. So if you are interested in the NetBank My Goals account, make sure you check the link in my description box or you can visit personal.netbank.co.za and sign up for a My Goals account. There's a lot more other features obviously that comes with this type of account, like 50% off of your new Metro tickets earning rewards every time you swipe. However, I really thought the My Pockets was really key for the type of video we're doing. All right, let's continue into checklist item number five. Number five, swipe something small just to test that the amount is actually in your account. And then number six, go home and sleep. You need to rest. You should not be going out to celebrate because you might overdo it due to the excitement. So just take this day to rest. Number seven, keep the same routine for a month whilst you're thinking and planning about this money. So if you go to work, continue to go to work, continue to do your job. Do not just quit just because you have this newfound wealth. It might not last. So think about it, but also keep to your same habits. That way you can make sure you're not spiraling. And then lastly, number eight, if you have someone you can trust, tell them 
but only after two weeks. It could be your parents, siblings, partner, best friend, whoever it is that you believe has your best interest at heart, but only tell them after two weeks. The reason I'm saying this is because you need to take time to think for yourself before you have any other person influencing your thoughts and your desires. Because if you tell someone immediately when you receive the money, they might now influence you to do certain things and you might not be able to make decisions based on what you want as an individual. So give it two weeks. Once you're ready, tell the person. All right, and then lastly, general planning or rather a toolkit that you can use as you are trying to figure out how to use this money. I'm going to run through this a bit quickly just because I don't want this video to be too long. However, if you guys do want a part two of money traps that people fall for, let me know in the comments and I will make a second video. Reflect on your current financial life. Be honest. How are you with money? How are you as a spender? Number two, are you employed or do you have a business? Essentially, I'm trying to understand, do you have money coming in? If you're a student, that's okay. Continue studying. When you're done, you will actually also get a job and start making money. Number three, do you have debt? By debt, I mean loans or anything which incurs high interest expense. Probably advisable for you to actually settle it. However, again, it depends on your life. You can also, instead of just settling the whole thing, you can also just pay a large amount towards it. Number four, do you have an emergency fund? An emergency fund is money that is quickly accessible. With your emergency fund, it is recommended that you have three to six months of your living expenses. However, if you are self-employed or you're in business, I would actually recommend that you even push it higher. So do a whole 12 months. Number five, ask yourself what your life goal is. What is it that you want? A lot of people have dreams and aspirations of becoming rich and wealthy, but to be quite honest, the money in your account is not going to make you happy. Rather, it's the things that you do with the money that will make you happy. So this is the time for you to think about what actually makes you happy. What are you working towards this entire time? For some people, it could be they want to further their studies. Maybe this is a chance for you to use this money to study. Other people want to buy a car. Others want to buy a house. Others want to open a business. Others want to travel. Others want to retire at 50 instead of 65. We are all different and we are all working towards different things. Number six, invest the money. When you invest something, you're usually putting it away today with the hopes of getting better returns later. But please, with this, make sure you are doing it through reputable companies or through secure methods. There are a lot of scams that happen and as someone who is expecting a lot of money, you will actually be at the very top of the list of the people who are desirable to scam. I do recommend that you speak to firstly your financial advisor, maybe they can help you. But also secondly, I do have an investing playlist on my YouTube, which will actually show you the different types of investments. But please be very careful, make sure you're doing all of your checks, your due diligence before you put away your money because it will run out. All right, cool. What I'm going to say is, guys, as a parting comment, money that comes to you very quickly will eventually run out if there is nothing coming in. What you need to do is look at this as a boost. There's this game called Subway Surfer and you run and you duck across the trains and then there are parts where you actually get these jumbo boots so it's like a boost. View this money as a boost. It is something that can get you to your goals a lot quicker than you would have had you just, you know, continued normally. However, continue running. It's not like that guy gets the big boots and then he just stops ducking. He continues to run because that is what life is like. It's a nice way to get you to your goals faster, but if you don't have a goal and you don't have a plan, you're just getting this massive boost to nowhere. So be very careful, think about it, rest, be calm, okay? And also don't change the way you operate too much, okay? Don't be flexing too much. And actually, I do wanna do this part two on money traps that people fall for. So let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see it. Comment part two and I'll drop that video. But if you guys don't want it, then it's fine. We'll keep it moving. All right, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you check the links in my description box if you do want to go for the NetBank My Goals account. Thank you so much for tuning in and i can't wait to see you guys all right bye if you enjoyed this video please tip me with the like comment and subscription